Good morning. Good morning and welcome to the worship service today. Good to be with you. I appreciate that on the screen it gave me a word of welcome there. Welcome to Pastor Dahl. That's who I am. And some of you remember that. It's been 21 years since I was here serving you as your called pastor. And many of you remember that. Some of you are probably trying to forget that. <laughs> no, I remember it fondly. 15 years here, serving as your pastor, a blessed privilege for me to do that, and a blessed privilege to come back today. Thanks to Pastor Dave for giving that invitation, and thanks to you for always being welcoming as you are. Good to be with you today for worship. And again, I just thank you very much for those 15 years of ministry we shared together. I count it as a real blessing. You were, you were tops, that's all I can say, you were tops. So with our welcome, we want to make sure that you're reminded of the fellowship time that follows the worship today. We want to let you know about those friendship paths that we would encourage you to use, letting us know about your, he about your being here, plus uh, any note that you might want to make on there for for the benefit of the ministry together. The broadcast, we welcome those who will be hearing the broadcast on KDIO radio. Today that is sponsored by Ruth Hansen in loving memory of her husband Peter in loving memory of her son Peter and honoring their grandson, her grandson Peter. So we thank them, we thank Ruth for the sponsor of the broadcast. We will be celebrating the sacraments today Sacrament of Holy Baptism, the baptism of Fiona James Backstrand. And so we look forward to that, and we look forward to celebrating the Sacrament of Holy Communion together. As we come to communion, we want to make sure that you know it is the Lord's table. And the Lord has set it, and he welcomes his people. And so you're welcome to come to Holy Communion. If you desire not to take the wine and have grape juice, that's available. And also there is gluten-free bread available. Just make that known as you come if you desire to have that. Also, you may receive communion in the pew, so let the ushers know and they will help us to you to bring it to you in the pew if you need that. Children are welcome to come forward to receive a blessing. Then at the close of the service today, during that last hymn, Sunday school children and their parents are invited to head toward the Sunday school classrooms. And we invite you to do that by using the exit there and the stairway downstairs there at the rear of the church. And they do tell me that there will be treats in the classroom. So that is all prepared and ready for our Sunday school students. With that, I know that Sandy Moeller has a word concerning the women of the church, the FELCW, so I'll call upon her to bring a little word on that right now. I think, is Sandy here? I heard that was my indication that Sandy would be here. 
to bring a word. I don't know what the word was. I wasn't told that. <laughs> More, oh, laughs. <laughs> I guess without Sandy being here, we'll just say, be reminded there, there is an insert, there's information in your bulletin concerning the LEFSA project for the Scandinavian Food Fair, and we invite all to that, I'm sure, a very festive time for the church. Are there other announcements that should be made? Otherwise, may we stand for the greeting and the sharing of the peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May we share that greeting of good morning and peace with one another. God's peace. Good morning. God's peace. Good to see you, Rod. God's peace and good morning. Good morning. God's peace. David, God's peace. God's peace. Good morning. Good to see you. God's peace. It's good to see you. God's peace. 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 God's peace. The order for our worship this morning is found with setting two on page 116. We enter into worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, we have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins have been forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen us with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in our hearts through faith. Amen. Our entrance hymn, all creatures worship God most high. We're going to sing the first four verses. I invite that we be seated.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Together, we pray our prayer of the day. Sovereign God, you have created us to live in loving community with one another. Form us for life that is faithful and steadfast and teach us to trust like little children that we may reflect the image of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The reading can be found on page 2 of the Old Testament in the Pew Bibles. Genesis 2 stresses that people are not meant to live in isolation, but in relationship. Out of love for humanity, God creates them male and female to provide companionship for each other and to become with each other one flesh. The Hebrew words used here are ish, man, and isha, woman. A reading from Genesis, the second chapter, beginning with the 18th verse. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air, and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave, gave names to all cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for the man, there was not found a helper 
as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one was taken. Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 8 is found in the red ELW hymnal between the readings and the hymns. We will read responsively by half verse. You crown us with glory and honor. A reading from the Psalms, the eighth chapter beginning with the first verse. O Lord, our Lord. How majestic is your name in all the earth. You whose glory is chanted above the heavens and out of the mouths of infants and children. You have set up a fortress against your enemies to silence the foe and avenge you. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what are mere mortals that you should be mindful of them? Human beings that you should care for them. Yet you have made them little less than divine. With glory and honor you crown them. You have made them rule over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. All flocks and cattle. Even wild beasts of the field. The birds of the air, the fish of the sea. And whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading can be found on page 170 of the New Testament in the Pew Bibles. Quoting from the Psalms, this passage from Hebrews emphasizes that Jesus, the one through whom God created everything and who sits at God's right hand, is also the one who experienced human suffering and death in order to blaze the path of salvation for us. A reading from Hebrews, the first chapter, beginning with the first verse. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Now God did not subject the coming world about which we are speaking to angels, but someone has testified somewhere What are human beings that you are mindful of them, or mortals that you care for them? You have made them for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet. Now in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to them, but we do see Jesus who for a little while was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. This is the word of the Lord.
Hear the Holy Gospel recorded for us in the 10th chapter of St. Mark. You can find that on page 35 in the New Testament. We begin with the second verse. Some Pharisees came, and to test him they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, of, in the, house the disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, let the children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly, I tell you, Whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his his arms, laid his hands on them, and he blessed them. The gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. Please be seated. Just a word about our song today. The title is You Sing Over Me, and it is a song of wonder and it is a song of assurance. And I'd like to reference a verse from the Psalms reading today that we heard again echoed in uh, the New Testament scripture. When I consider your heavens and the work of your hands, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what are mere mortals that you should be mindful of them and human beings that you should care for them? He is our creator. He sings over us with joy, as a parent would sing over a child, with lullabies, but even more importantly, with songs of healing and salvation. He sings over us with joy.
Thank you, choir, for powerfully singing over us with the assurance of God's word. Thank you so much. The power of song, the singing word of the Lord coming to us can ease the deepest of valleys, kind of help us through that. The power of song, the power of music does that, can ease those times. And then in times when we experience the joy of life, when we're at a loss for words, the soaring sound of majestic notes of praise can do so much more than our regular words of life. So we're thankful for song, to be sure. Messages of song, sound of song, it's all good. Interesting, that song came to mind for me as I looked at the texts for today. We've got this Genesis text that comes to us. And we might even say that with that text we have a link from Genesis is way back in the beginnings. We don't even, can't even count the years, you know. It's that long ago, aeons ago, that the creation began. But here we are in our time where we say we might even have a link to that by way of a song that was sung that maybe didn't even have an inkling of that, but it came to me in reading Genesis. The song, the pop song, a pop song of some years ago. You won't remember this, Acolytes. It's not, it's not a part of your venue. But some of you remember the song entitled, One is the Loneliest Number. <laughs> oh, I think I hear a chuckle of recognition there, that that's a song that came out before your time. But there was a song, One is the Loneliest Number. What do we read? In Genesis, we read about this mystical, wondrous formula that came into place by way of the Lord's God doing, the Lord God's doing. And it started with the number one. There was one, Adam, first man. And what was discovered about that one? He was lonely. And God declared, it is not good for man to be alone. And so then came this formula, started with the one. And then God produced the other one called woman. And here's the formula that's mystical and wondrously good. One plus one equals one. With the coming together of the one male and then God providing the other one female, there came to be a completeness, a wholeness to it, a wondrous, wondrous wholeness. And then in time, there came to be further focus on this coming together of the other one. Got the first one, then you got the other one equaling, coming to equal one, but then there came to be this focus on this other one. Over the years, focus on the words of the Lord as the Lord provided this, we have the words that came before us in the text. I will provide a helper for him. Oh, a helper for him. What, what does that mean? Did this other one then come on as an assistant? Many years ago, I received a call, pastoral call. It would be my second call in ministry. 
And as I received that call, I had visited with the congregation. They extended this call, and they said, we would like you to become our assistant pastor. I turned the call down. And they got back to me. They called me up after they received this message that I was going to not answer the call to serve. And they wondered why. And I said, well, you know, uh, I, I was going to be called, uh, you said, to be the assistant pastor. And I'm a little perplexed in terms of what that means. Assistant to whom? Does it mean I'm going to be an errand boy to the lead pastor? I knew I wasn't going to be the lead pastor. That was not a part of it at all. But at the same time, it seemed this whole matter of being called as an assistant was a little bit perplexing in the sense of it kind of took away my sense of having a ministry in my own right. I would assist someone who was doing the ministry. And so they said, well, we can fix that. And so they issued the call again after we had had some conversation and so on. And they called me as the associate pastor. And that call I accepted with the sense of it spoke more to a mutuality. You know, it wasn't, wasn't that it would be equal. The other pastor was the lead pastor. I was the associate pastor, but it spoke to coming together in a complementary way, in a recognizable way of each of us bringing our gifts and working together for the good of that congregation. So as a matter of assistant pastor, no, somehow that stood as something of a block to it all. So then to the, back to the illustration or the story of creation. Eve coming as an assistant person? No. No. A helper, but not an assistant person. We are called into that union of man and woman coming together to be one in marriage, it is called to be a mutually helpful relationship. Mutually helpful. And sometimes I think we have lost that by way of turning the word helper into a one-dimensional rather than a two-dimensional effort where two people come together trying to be mutually helpful. So one doesn't have to be the loneliest number when two come together to become one and they understand it as mutually supportive, mutually helpful. And then we come to the gospel. You know that first line of that pop song, one is the loneliest number? I don't know if you remember the second line. I didn't remember the second line, but I looked up the lyrics. Get this, the second line of the song says, two can be as bad as one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, that can happen. Two together and it's kind of like oil and water. It never comes together in that mutual thing and divorce happens. Divorce happens. It's not the intended result. Nobody says, well, let's get married so we can get divorced. It's not the intent. So, what do we do with that? I simply say, divorce happens. It's not what people wish for. It happens. And I believe it would happen less if marriage were built on mutual helpfulness, an understanding of being mutual instead of one always over the other. Oh, you know, sometimes in, in my pre-marriage counseling down the hall here, I would always say to people, you know, you're not always going to agree. And maybe when it comes, comes time to choosing the wallpaper, she's going to have the decision. And you're going to say, okay. And when it comes to ch choosing uh, whether it's a stick shift or automatic transmission, maybe you're going to, maybe she'll have a to say about that too. But you kind of trade off, but it's a mutual thing. It's a mutual thing where you recognize that and you work together toward the common good. One couple handled that by way of saying, he said, 
Oh, yeah, we decided right away. She'd, she'd make all the major decisions, and I'd make all the minor decisions. And uh, no, no, it was the other way around. Uh, he would make all the major decisions. She'd make all the minor decisions. And the pastor said, well, how's that going? Well, there haven't been any major decisions yet. So, yeah. <clears throat> so it was working well. Well, you know, we don't want to make jokes about things that don't work out. But that is the fact. Sometimes things don't work out. And it's painful. And what we need to do then is to be mutually helpful. It does not help us to attack those who have been divorced. Say, you're a bad person. We're all bad people. We all make different mistakes. And what we need to do is work together to bridge the gaps and come together so that we can hopefully all be more mutually helpful. That should be our goal and our call as God's people. And so we remember the formula. One plus one equals one. But then two can be as bad as one. Things happen. It's not a perfect world. And we keep praying and hoping as God's people that we can be given the power of his spirit to work in the direction by his calling because he has called us to love one another and not be in the attack mode, be in the supportive mode, try, trying to help people through their valleys, whatever the valley is, be mutually supportive in the name of the Lord. Amen. We have the privilege of coming to the Lord by way of holy baptism. And so I'm going to ask that the Backstrand family and the sponsors please come forward and gather around the font. In baptism of water and the word, our heavenly father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ and in communion with the saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. I ask you as parents and as sponsors, do you present this child for holy baptism? If so, please answer together. We present Fiona for baptism. So, as parents and sponsors, Please remember that you are called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God. And with that, you bring Fiona for this gift of holy baptism. And in doing that, there are certain responsibilities that we ask you to be mindful of, that you would assist as you are able, that you would encourage as you are able to help Fiona live among God's faithful people, this church, that you would seek to encourage the bringing of her to the word of God and to the Holy Supper, teaching, helping, assisting, encouraging the teaching of the Lord's Prayer, the basic statements of faith, placing in her hands Holy Scripture, nurturing her in faith and prayer so that she may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others, and the world God made, and work for justice and for peace. Do you promise to ask God's strength in helping Fiona to grow in this Christian faith? If so, please answer together. 
we do. And people of God, do you promise to support Fiona and pray for her in her new life in Christ? If so, please respond together, we do. So I ask that we profess our faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Parents and sponsors, do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Please respond, I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Again, please respond, I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? And then as a congregation, we join together with the articles of our faith, the Apostles' Creed. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, that you are now ready to pour your Holy Spirit out upon Fiona, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Cody, I'm going to have you stand right here. And bring Fiona out. Fiona James Backstrand. Fiona James Backstrand, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Why? We have a towel here someplace, but I didn't get that. <laughs> she's wet because she's been washed with the water that God promised us would bring us connection with him. That's a good question. <laughs> Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water in the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. We pray now that you would sustain Fiona, with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of joy and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Fiona, child of God, you have been marked with the cross of Christ, our, the Lord our Jesus Christ. You have been marked with the cross of Christ as a child of his forever. Amen. Then I'm going to ask uh, Luke to take the baptismal candle and light that from our Christ candle, the Paschal candle right up front, the tall one. Light it there. Baptism is a time of water, the word, and we bring in the symbolism of the light. Christ coming to be the light of the world. Christ coming to be the light of our lives. And so we Present this candle to Fiona. We'll have you present it to mom so that she can hang on to that while Cody hangs on. And as that is presented, let us all together join in the words. Sponsors, parents, congregation. We'll do this by phrase, okay? We'll do let your light so shine. So repeat after me if you would. We're, we're speaking to Fiona. Fiona. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. 
Amen. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ. Into the Christ. Child of the same Child of the same Heavenly Father and with us in the kingdom of God. Let's give her a warm First English welcome. You may be seated. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. We will pray for the whole people of God. Oh Lord, we thank you for that good news that you love your people. We thank you for the opportunity through the power of the Holy Spirit to be beckoned back unto you, to love you and to love one another, to follow your teachings that we might care for one another. And this morning, as we hear about an earthquake in Haiti, we are mindful of a team from this congregation going there to care for those people. We pray your safekeeping for the team 
We pray your comfort for those who have been ravaged by this earthquake. earthquake. We pray, O oh Lord, your healing power for all who are suffering trauma, whether it's an earthquake, whether it's some kind of disturbance that has come into life by way of a breakdown, one way or another, we pray your healing and comforting power. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we are thankful for all that we have. We are thankful for the, the, the blessing that we have as we live in a country where we are basically at peace. And at the same time, there are lots of ways in which we're not at peace, but we're thankful we are not a war-torn country. And we pray, O oh Lord, for those countries that are. Help us to be helpers unto them. And where there is dissension in our own country, help us to be helpers along the way toward overcoming that and becoming more so one together in the vision that we have for us and for all peoples. God, in your mercy. Yeah. Oh, Lord God, we pray healing and comfort for all of those listed in our bulletin today, remembered by each of us in different ways. And that list, we know, is not exhaustive. We know that we bring others in our own circle that are in need of that same comfort and healing. And so we ask your presence for all who are suffering these kinds of needs. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you for celebrating baptism. We thank you for little Fiona. We thank you for her family. We thank you for her church family. And we thank you, Lord, that we can be reminded of our own baptism, that we are baptized people. Doesn't make us perfect, but it helps us to know where to go in our imperfection to be strengthened along the way, to be corrected along the way, to be helped along the way into life that is more pleasing, we pray, unto you and for those around us. God, in your mercy, all these things and whatever else you see as our need, O oh Lord, we pray that you would provide in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, broke it, gave thanks, and gave it for all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supped and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. We pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. It is the Lord's table. The Lord is the host. We are his guests. He invites us to come as we believe and trust in his promises. All are welcome. Please come. You may be seated. Now, do we...
Now may the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen and keep us unto eternal life. Peace be with us. Amen. May the Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord says shine upon us with grace and with mercy. The Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord.